have covered the, the first six chapters so far. And now we're going to start chapter seven, recurrence relations. I have uh, given you the lecture note uh, as a PhD, a PDF file, and also I put it on the web here. And also I made a laboratory for chapter seven with uh, Python-based Sage code uh, completed in this web address. And also I gave a reference uh, on, on the explanation of recurrence relations on this web address. And also I have made uh, the, all the content for chapter eight and chapter nine, including the laboratory for those. For the last, last, for the last chapter and appendix, I found the all necessary information in here. So whenever you need, you can go here to get the necessary information. Now we start chapter seven, recurrence relations. First section is an introduction, and second section is a solving recurrence relations. Find the solution for a given recurrence relations. So in this chapter, we will show a recurrence relation can be used to study and to solve counting problems. A recurrence relation defines a sequence by giving the nth value in terms of its predecessor. And the nth value is given in terms of the immediately preceding value. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in order for a recurrence relation to define a sequence, a startup value or value must be given. Mm -hmm. yes. These startup values are called initial conditions. So, a sequence is called a solution of a recurrence relation if its term satisfies the recurrence relations. So recurrence relation with, the, uh, with the, the initial condition uh, forms a recurrence relation. And uh, uh, a solution of the recurrence relation is a sequence of numbers uh, that satisfies all those recurrence relations. Okay, for example, uh, a recurrence relation for a sequence uh, A0, A1, da, 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 is an equation that relates An to certain of its predecessor, Ais. Initial condition for the sequence A0, A1, uh, explicitly given value for a finite number of the terms of sequences. Here is the first example, a Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci sequence is a recurrence relation formed with this. Addition of the uh, preceding two numbers form a next term, Fn with the initial condition F1 is equal to 1 and F2 is equal to 1. So if we have F1 and F2, then it, it gives us F3. If, since we have F2 and F3, so we, have F, we, can, we can have F4. Since we have F3 and F4, so we can have F5. So we can have F4 and F5, so we can have F6. It goes on. So we have all the sequence from F0, F1 to Fn with these recurrence relations. A person, uh, the next example is, a com is about the compound, compound interest. A person invests $1,000 at 12% 12 12 interest compounded annually. And if AN represents the amount at the end of N years, then find the recurrence relation and initial condition that define the sequence AN. Okay. Find the recurrence relation and initial condition for this situation. Here, if we start 
with the original amount of money A0, then after one year, we will have original amount of money plus interest, which is the uh, 1.0.12 uh, times A0. Addition of these two will, is, the, is going to be the amount of money that we will have after one year of invest. Okay? So it gives us A1. Okay? Here, uh, A0 is the initial amount, which is 1,000. And this can be written as 1.12 times A0. After two years, after two years, the amount will be A1 plus is a compound interest. So A1 plus the amount that we have after one year and the interest on it, which gives us 1.12 times A1. But we know A1 is 1.1 to A0. So if we replace this here, then we will have the square of 1.12 times A0 is same as A2. So after three years, we will have say similar relations. After n years, we, the amount that we're going to have is this. After one year, we have one's power. After two years, uh, we have a square. After three years, we will have a cube. After n years, we will have n's power, like this. So after n years, we will have a n amount of money with these relations. Here, we know the original uh, money that we did invest was $1,000. So if we substitute 1000 here, then we will have this much of the money which will be returned after I'm here. So here, this is a, this is a, uh, this is a example of recurrence relations. Okay. Mm -hmm. With the initial value, 1,000. That's the answer. We, uh, this is a pseudo code for computing the compound interest. If we want, if we have 1,000 money, well, if we start with the 1,000, and then that original amount of money times uh, interest plus the, orig the original money, so that gives a 1.12, like what we have. Then we do it over and over again for the uh, case year. And this, I have made the code for that here. This is the code that we made with the compound interest. And if, we, if R is given, then the original, uh, the original money and the interest times uh, the money after case year gives us uh, the amount that we will have after K plus once a year. It's like that. So this code was made in here. Mm -hmm. This uh, and that. Uh -huh. I in the lab of chapter seven. Yeah, I with this uh, pseudo code. I we made uh, the compound computing compound interest with this code, like what I explain, just explained. It gives us if you start with the initial amount of one thousand dollar. In ten, after ten years, uh, with the interest twelve percent annual interest, uh, compound interest is twelve percent. Then the amount that we will have is three thousand one hundred five dollars and eighty five cents, like this. After twelve years, this is the money. After fifteen years, this is the money. After twenty five years. That will go about seventeen thousand dollars. So, if we have a twelve percent interest compoundly, then if we start with one thousand dollar, then after twenty five years we will have seventeen thousand dollar, like that. Okay, anyway, uh huh. 
Next, cardinality of a power set. Yeah. You know, the, you ha we have studied the uh, power set already. Uh, when we have a set of uh, n, uh, n, n, n uh, entries in it, then power set of that set has cardinality, which is two to the n. Okay, this is also uh, is related to the recurrence relations. Let S n denoted the number of subsets of n element set. Then, since going from n minus one element to set to an n element set. Uh, doubles the number of uh, subset as we studied in chapter 2. So we obtain the recurrence relation as like this. Isn't it? If we have a n minus 1 object, power set of n minus 1 object, then if we have one more, then all, is, all we need is this object is in there in one subset or not in every other subset. So all we have to do is multiply two on it like this. Okay? So this is a relationship. This is a recurrence relation. And the initial condition is when you have a one element set, then power set of one element set is uh, empty set is the one. If we have one element subset, then, then it, we have a two set, whether it is in or out. Okay. So two. So with at first, the S0 is uh, S0. S0 is, uh, S0 is uh, one. Two to the zero is equal to one. It's a, a set of uh, no object, no entry, no, no element in it. Is an empty set, which is only one. S1 is a 2 to the 1, which is 2. S2 is a 2 to the 2, 4, like this. So this is this uh, gives us a, what? It gives us a what? recurrence relation for a power set. Uh, next. Next example. Let Sn denote the number of n bit string that does not contain the pattern 1, 1, 1. Develop a recurrence relations for S1 and S2, da, 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 and the initial conditions that define the sequence. Okay. Here we count the number of n bit strings that do not contain the pattern 1, 1, 1. How? Here the bit means uh, the minimal unit to count data. So zero, one combinations. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we will count here. So that uh, there are n bit strings that do not contain the patterns uh, such as uh, n bit string that begin with zeros that begin with one zeros, that begin with one one. And there are three categories. We can classify the n bit string with these conditions. Then we start to count the number of n bit string that satisfies this in this category first, then second category, and the number of third categories. If we add all of them, that will give us the whole number, Sn. By addition principle, S n can be can be uh, found by adding the number of n b string with this property and the others like this. So S n actually is the addition of uh, these three number of uh, strings. They start with this. Okay, an NB string begins with zero and does not contain the pattern one, one, one. Okay, 
start with zero and uh, do not contain the pattern one on one. How? Here, this is then n minus one bit string following the initial zero does not contain the pattern one one one. So since any n minus one bit string uh, not containing one 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 can follow the initial zero. So this is exact. This is exactly same as the Sn strings of type A. Then there are Sn strings of type A. When we count Sn, uh, we can count n bit string begin with zero. Then that does not contains uh, one one one. Then we have n minus one bit string that does not uh, contain the pattern one one one, which is S n minus one. So. There are n minus one string of type A. Next, an n bit string begin with one zero and do not contain one one one. How many uh, there are such n bit string? Then here we have two are already left, and we have uh, n minus two bit strings, and we are counting n minus two bit string does not contain one one one. That's going to be n minus two bit string. N, the n minus two, uh, the, uh, that number will be same as n minus two. So there are n minus two a string of type B. Done. Last, if n bit string begin with one one does not contain the pattern one one one, uh -huh. then what happen? Mm -hmm. Then the third bit. Uh, the must be zero here. If we, if we want one, then we should have zero here in order to not having one 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 pattern in it. So we have one one zero, and we have n minus three bit string, which has no one 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 in it. So that number counting is S three. So in the type three case, we have. S minus three strings of type three. So addition of all these three is S is equal to first S one plus S n minus one plus S n minus two plus S n minus three. So addition of these three cases will form the S n. So this form of what? A recurrence relations and the initial condition initial conditions as you see s1 then we have we have what we have only one string so 0 and 1 there are only two cases for s2 we have what two positions with 0 and 1 in it so 1 0 2 cases and 1 0 2 cases 2 to the 2 four cases 3 bit string s3 has has what 2 to the 8, 2 to the 3, which have 8 cases, but we should not have 1, 1, 1 there. One case will be deleted. So 2 to, two to the cube minus 1, which is the case 1, 1, 1. So we have 7. So initial conditions are 2, 4, 7, like this. So this is the recurrence relation with this initial condition. This is what we are looking for. Understand? Miss, miss uh, as, yeah, as you mentioned, yeah, so basically this is a kind of combinatorial argument. We only when you when we want when you we want to count S N, we did use a principle uh, addition principle and okay? divide the cases and uh, add all those uh, number of uh, cardinality of each cases and uh, we use the relationship uh, between Sn and uh, the earlier uh, uh, numbers Si's to have Sn. And so we found the uh, relation such as this with the initial conditions. This for more recurrence relations. Next example is a very popular, uh, very popular example of Tower of Hanoi. Tower of Hanoi. You must have seen this. Wang Xiaoxiang. You must have seen this. 
那边。Have you heard about Tower of Hanoi? Minimum number of moves. We want to move uh, this uh, links, this this uh, pl uh, this plate, uh, to the others. But with the uh, the rule such as this, the Tower of Hanoi is a puzzle consisting of three packs, three packs, one, two, three, it is bar, mounted on the board and end discs, end discs here, of various size with holes in their center, like this. this it is assumed that if a disc is on a pack, only a disc of a smaller diameter can be placed on the top of the first disc, like this. Bigger ones on the bottom and smaller one on the top. Okay. Okay. Uh, given all the discs stacked on one pack, as in figure 7.1.2, the problem is to transfer these discs to another pack by moving one disc at a time. The original question is this. The original question is Monk are transferring. 64 gold discs from one pack to another. According to the rules of the puzzle, the myth says that the world will end when they finish this puzzle. How long after the monk started will the world end if the monk takes one second to move a disc? How long? Yeah, as we looked at, yeah, this it really takes a long. Yeah, huh? it will take more than this many years, which is far more than the starting to now. The what cosmos started. So, so it will really take a long. Then how we could handle these problems? And this, yeah, yeah, this is explanation. Yeah, this is a, uh, uh -huh. you can find the lots of information on Tower of Hanoi. Uh, mm -hmm. This number actually it takes this many of time. Two to the n minus one. This is called the Mersenne number, and it takes uh, this many of years. Five thousand. Uh, Billion years. Anyway, yeah, you can find it from here. Here is the rules, and here is the second rules. We let a and b the number of moves required for the n discs. So then let's say if we have one, then we just move one from the others. So a one is equal to one. For a n, in order to move the largest disc, hence so there must be nothing in C. So we need to move n minus one discs from A to B. This takes A n minus one moves, isn't it? Then move the largest from A to C, one move. Then n minus one discs from B to C, which is A a, 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 n, a, a n minus one moves. So the A n would be two times a n minus 1 plus 1. This is the relation that we're going to have, which is this, which can be simply, when, I, and, uh, when it is simplified, it will be this number, which is called the Merson number. Do you understand what this argument it is? I will show it. Okay, as you see here, in order to move uh, this to here, or we we first move uh, n minus 1 uh, discs from here to here, so that will count as s n minus 1. Then move the largest one to here, that's one move, that's plus 1. And then move this n minus 1 discs to on the top of here. So the, that number possibility is s n minus 1. Okay? So all the possibilities like this, which will be a 2 times Sn minus 1 plus 1 is, will make uh, Sn. Okay? This is a recurrence relations. 
and h1 is equal to 1 here. And this is a solution. Okay, now we show how. So we have this recurrence relationship from this observation and here this, uh, uh, this, uh, this relationship can be written as uh, first to the, your, the first one plus the first term is uh, the uh, S uh -huh. mm -hmm. multiplied mm -hmm. so this uh, this uh, this can be simplified as uh, uh, this one plus two plus two square plus two cube plus da 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 up to two to the n minus one uh, easily. Then this is just uh, even more 등비수열이죠. So we can find uh, it with the geometric sum, which is two to the n minus one here. And uh, for example, for when n is equal to 64, then we, as you see, a1 is equal to 1 and a2 is equal to n, uh, 3, 7, and 15, as you uh, see in here, 1 uh, and 4 and 15, and so 1, 3, 7, and 15 here. So n is 2 to the n minus 1 here. If a1 is equal to 1, then a n is equal to 2 times a n minus 1 plus 1 here. And here, this is... Uh, as a n minus 1 is a 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 plus 1. So basically a n is equal to the n minus 1. So a to the 64, a of 64 is this number, which can be written as, this is roughly 2 to the 64, which is this, which is roughly this number, which is about this, this big number, which is about such a big number like this. So the world will not be ended until you dies and your kids uh, dies. Uh, next example is the cup web. The cup web simulation can be seen in here. Hi, this is a quick review of the Cobweb model, which was devised by Nicholas Caldor in the 1930s uh, using Marshallian demand and supply curves. If you look at um, price one, if we start at price one where there's been a, let's say, a harvest failure for raspberries or something, so the price is quite high. Now, um, this encourages people to supply a lot more for the following year. So a high price of raspberries, uh, the farmers shift over from maybe strawberry production or whatever berry production and move into raspberry production, maybe till the land for in, in preparation. And this encourages a massive increase in supply, which the following year or the following season drops the price down to P2. Now this in turn, given the demand, given the supply conditions, encourages farmers to produce less raspberries the following year, which pushes up their price up to P3 which encourages more to come back in the market, which encourages the price to drop, and you keep on going in a spiraling convergence onto equilibrium. And it's quite an interesting model, but what it's assuming is that the producers are looking at last year's prices to govern what they'll do the following year. It, it's also, you know, how this is affected depends on how you draw the demand and supply diagrams. So in this case, price elasticity of demand is more elastic than supply, and when you draw it like that, you'll get a convergence. On the other hand, you'll get a divergence if you have different demand and supply conditions. So, for example, if the price elasticity of supply is more elastic than demand, we have a divergence away from equilibrium. So starting at a price such as P1, P1 is slightly above what would be the market equilibrium otherwise, and this so causes a, an this increase in supply, which the following, during that the season, the relationship between the, the number of production and the, and the to price to produce changes. Less, which How then changes. causes the price up to P3 because demand stays the same. Okay. Okay, here. An economic model in the supply and demand are given by a linear equation. So demand equation is like this, where P is price and Q is the quantity of the production, and they, they are coefficient. And if price increases, then the consumer demand less of the product, okay? 
So the supply uh, equation is like this, P is equal to KQ, where price is, uh, uh, P is a price and Q is a quantity, and K is a con constant. So if the price increase, then manufacturers are willing to supply more quantities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a time lag as supply react to change. I think Mr. Lee asked uh, why, why this uh, uh, the N and N plus one uh, is changed. This is because of this time lag. Okay, here. Denote the discrete time interval as n is equal to 0, 1, da, da, da. Then demand equation can be written from here as this. Uh, that is at time n, but the quantity n, qn of the product will be sold at price pn. Then the supply uh, equation is given as pn is equal to k times q to the uh, q of n plus 1. That is, one unit of time is required for the manufacturer to adjust the quantity Q n plus 1 at time n plus 1 to the price Pn at the prior time n. So now we need to solve this recurrence relation. Okay. Then the demand equation for time n plus 1 is uh, Pn plus 1 is equal to A and A minus b times q n plus 1 and n plus 1 can be replaced as uh, 1 over k or k times p n so we have uh, for the price uh, this this gives us a uh, recurrence relations and uh, the graph of this uh, is going to be like this the curve with a stabilizing price so we have with this movement uh, after certain period of time the price and the demand and the supply are stabilized at the reasonable price and with the reasonable amount of supply. So uh, this is a, a kind of shows an economic model in mathematically. The price change build graph graphically. Okay. Any question on this? So as you see the. the the price uh, uh, change are uh, viewed, uh, and after a certain uh, period of time, we can reach it, uh, a reasonable price uh, uh, with the stable uh, supply of the production. So when uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, this is true. By continuing this process, we obtain the cup web, like, like uh, earlier web, like this. For the supply and demand function, the price approaches the intersection of the supply and demand curve. Here, as you see, at this point, the stabilizing point is uh, the intersection, usually intersection of these two equations. But this is not all the cases. That's the general case. But this, there are other cases like this. And the price and supply are, are just uh, the, what, rounding and rounding like this. This is another case for special coefficient. And uh, this is another case, uh, like uh, what? Diverse, uh, it's just explode. Explode the price, there's no price like this. When this, this can, yeah, if, uh, mm -hmm. if k is equal to b, then price fluctuates between two values. Uh, and k is equal to b. If, uh, if b is less than k, then that, uh, price uh, converges uh, to the intersection of those two curves. If B is bigger than K, then it, the increasing price uh, swing, it, it just uh, it explodes. And this is kind of the case for the, uh, the artistic work of uh, uh, famous uh, painters. Next, Ackermann's function. Ackermann's function is a recurrence relation like this. This is a special, another case of a recurrence relations. We do this. A of M0 is this. A of Mn is defined in this way. Initial condition is A of 0n is equal to M plus 1. Ackermann's function is, uh, is rapid rate of growth. The computation is like this. But what about A11? A11. A11. 
then this can be written as this by 1.12. So 1, 1 here, so 1 minus 1 is 0, and 1 and 0 here. So we now have this. Then A10, A10 is, A10 is also A01, isn't it? So it can be replaced like this. Then A01 is 2, so A02. So if, have, if it is A02, then it's going to be 3. So A11 value is 3 from this recurrence relation. This was shown in here that I made recurrence relation. Here, I made the code for that, COPEX and ACMEN. So, this, this, uh, so I made a code for this here, ACMEN code. So if I execute it, then A22 is this. A12 is a12 is 4. A11 is 3. A15 is something like A27 or 35 is. This is the code that I did from the given recurrence relations that you can use. Anyway. I think that's the end of section 1.1. That's uh, just the introduction of, uh, of recurrence relation. I showed some examples of recurrence relation. I asked to solve these problems, and these are the uh, problems that I gave you. You can solve it and, shoot and, uh, and uh, check each other to have your final answers. Next, section 7.2, solving uh, recurrence relations. A sequence is called the solution of recurrence relation if its term satisfies the recurrence relations. Two methods of solving recurrence relations. Iteration and linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficient. Okay? So this is what you're going to learn. And I think you have learned this method in high school years. Now you're going to learn this method. I will show both of them. First example, by iteration solve the recurrence relation this, and in, when initial condition is uh, 2. How you solved this before? Okay, so here the recurrence relation is like this. If a, uh, uh, see from here we know this. If we replace uh, n as n, n, n by n minus 1, then we have these relations. Okay, we substitute this into here, then we will have a n is equal to this, which can be written as this. If we substitute n by n minus 2, then n minus 2 can be written in here. We can replace this one to here, which is this. So if we do continue this, then a n can be written as here, which is a n is equal to a n plus 3 times n minus 1. When a, since a1 is equal to 2 as an initial condition, so a n is equal to 2 plus 3 times n minus 1, like what we did here. Same thing. Okay? But and also, this is the first example. Next, by iteration, solving the recurrence relation, Sn is equal to 2 times Sn minus 1. That's what we saw in the first, first section on power set, okay? Number of sets, uh, subset in power set. This is the initial, uh, this is the recurrence relation for the power set number. Of, so, okay, in, in this case, Sn is equal to 2 times Sn minus 1. Sn minus 1 is equal to 2 times Sn minus 2. Da, da, da. So we, have, we can just go and go until we, have, we reach it to, the, to the n times S of 0. Okay? S of 0 is equal to 1, so this is going to be 2 to the n. So Sn is going to be 2 to the n. That's the number of cardinality of the power set of S. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is a solution for this recurrence relation on power set, okay? And population growth. Assume that the dear population of Lustig County is 1,000 at time n is equal to zero. The increase from time n minus one to time n is 10% of the size at time n minus one. Then write a recurrence relation and initial condition that define the dear population at time n, and then solve it. 
Okay, so D0 is equal to 1,000. Okay, then increase from n minus 1 to time n is dn minus dn minus 1. That's the increase in that period. Okay, that was 10%. So, this, uh, the increase was 10%. So, dn minus dn minus 1 is 1.0 times dn minus 1. So, 10% increased. Since dn is equal to dn minus 1 plus 0 0.1 dn plus 1. So, okay. So this, uh, uh, like this. Uh, mm -hmm. So here, here, uh, dn is equal to 1.1 times dn minus 1, like what you saw as a compound interest. Here, but by the same, the compound interest are used in here. So dn is equal to 1.1 times dn minus 1, but dn minus 1 is 1.1 times dn minus 2, da, da, da. So 1.1 times 1.1 to the n's power to n, G, uh, D0, where D0 was 1,000. So this is uh, it. So this is the solution for the recurrence relation for what we did on the interest, compound interest when it started with $1,000. So this is a solution. This is a recurrence relation, and this is the, this is the recurrence relation, and this, uh, uh, this was the solution that we found. Tower of Hanoi can be written in this way. Cn is equal to 2Cn minus 1 plus 1. This is a recurrence relation for the uh, Hanoi, Tower of Hanoi when initial condition C1 is equal to 1. When you have a 1 disk, all you have to do is move at once. So this is a recurrence relation. Then how you do solve it? And Cn equal to Cn minus 1 and so on. So 2 Cn minus 1 here. So you substitute n with n minus 1, then you're going to have what n minus 1 is equal to uh, 2 times Cn minus 2 plus 1. And simplify this, and then goes for the Cn minus 3, and goes, 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 and then you will have this, and you have that. This is what you did before. This is the recurrence. This is the this is how the way that you find the solution for the reconciliation that actually you did that before. Okay? You you, you saw this in section 3.1 and now you see in the section 3.2. This is the way to find the solution for the reconciliations. Solve the reconciliation on this example, the cup web, and solve it. And the PN is a price. Okay. Supply demand equations. How? How you solve it? Mm -hmm. And this is one way. Okay. Okay. In this case, we simplify the notation first. Let's substitute the S as a, uh, minus B over K. Then this can be written as this. And then this, uh, so for, we substitute n by n minus 1, then we have this. Uh, we substitute this into here, then we will have this. Then p n minus 2 can be replaced with uh, p this uh, in uh, p sub n minus 3. So it can be simplified in this, and we get going. Then if we will have this, which can be simplified in this, and replace uh, the uh, s with uh, uh, minus b of k, replace back, then this can be uh, substituted, this, this can be uh, rewritten in this way. So in this case, if b over k is less than 1, then it uh, converts uh, to this uh, number, which is an intersection of two equations. If it's equal to 1, then it oscillates, to make a box. If it's bigger than 1, then it just increase all the way. That's, this is the case that we saw in the earlier example of cup web. Next, linear homogeneous reconciliation of order k. Line, this is a linear, re, a linear homogeneous reconciliation of order k with coefficient, constant coefficient is a reconciliation of this form, poly, like a polynomials. So you see k, the first largest coefficient is not zero. Order k, ck is not zero. Okay, it's linear. 
This is an example. The recurrence relation Sn is equal to 2 times Sn minus. This is an example. And uh, Fn is equal to Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2. This is also a linear recurrence relation. Okay? This is a Fibonacci sequence. This, is about, this comes from the power set. Both are linear homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficient because coefficients are constant 2 and here 1 and 1. Okay, the, here the, we have this order is uh, 1 here, and here the order is equal to 2. Order 2. Well, n minus 1 and n minus 2, they are 2. Here is uh, only one, n, s, n and n minus 1. It's the order 1 linear recurrence relations. And this is an uh, example of non linear recurrence relation. The product of a n minus 1 and a n minus 2. So this is not linear. This is not linear homogeneous recurrence. And here, an minus an minus one is equal to n. This is a uh, this is a linear linear recurrence relations, but non-homogeneous because the term of this, the difference is not equal to zero. <coughs> but coefficient is constant. Okay, so we have seen a linear uh, homogeneous recurrence relation before. Now we see the linear, non-homogeneous recurrence relations. And what about this? Mm, this is n times a n minus 1 here. This is not a linear homogeneous recurrence relations. Okay. But this uh, a n is equal to, is, this is a, uh, uh, this is not a linear homogeneous recurrence relation with the constant coefficient because we have a coefficient is 3n, not constant. We have a 3n. It moves. So an is equal to 3n times an minus 1 is a linear homogeneous recursive relation with non-constant coefficient because the 3n is non-constant. k가 아니라 3n이니까 이거는 그냥 상수가 아니라 n에 따라 변하잖아요. 그러니까 non-constant. This is the last part and most important part of this section. Finding a general uh, solution. Find this is a general method of solving linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficient. This method, we are developing a method, finding a solution for linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficient. Okay? Such as this. We have, suppose we have a recurrence relationship like this and uh, initial condition like that. And find uh, the solution of this uh, recurrence relation. How? There are two ways. This is one way to find the solution. This is an alternative way. This is a, another way. There are long way and short way. This is a method. First, if we have this type of recurrence relations, then, then from here, you form an equation. A n, let a n be t square and uh, a n minus 1 as t and a n minus 2 as t to the 0, which is 1. Okay. Then we have a character equation. Uh, t square is equal to 5t minus 6 like this. Easy. From here, we can easily find the equation. Then this can be moved to this. t square minus 5t plus 6. It can be factored as this. Then we have t is equal to 2 and t is equal to 3 as a solution. 2 and 3. We use this 2 and 3 in this way, okay. Here, a n is equal can be, a, this uh, this this can be written in this way. So this from here we can form with this three and two. We uh, we use uh, we we use this two in here to make this minus three a n minus one on here. Then we have this and this with these relations. Replace this as b n. This uh, a n minus uh, 3an minus 1 as bn, then uh, bn can be written as 2 times b, b sub n minus 1 here, 
from here we solve this we uh, we have learned how to deal with this uh, type of recurrence relation in earlier example okay so we solve this uh, to find when the and the b uh, b1 is equal to minus 5 so we do solve bn as we have uh, done it before so to have the solution similarly we using t is equal to 3 we make this is equal to 3 times this so we substitute this as cn then we have cn is equal to 3 times cn minus 1 here so we have learned how to deal with this with the initial condition c1 is equal to 2 so cn can be simplified as this 3 was here 3 to the power here this is what we did in the earlier example so from those observations we have we have we have found two relations B, from bn and cn we have this and this if we resubstitute bn and cn then an minus 3 times an minus 1 is minus 5 times 2 to the n minus 1 and an minus an minus 2 times an an minus 1 is equal to 2 times a uh, 3 to the n minus 1 from here from here we we uh, simplify it as a second equation times 3 minus first equation times 2 that will give us this which is this which is this This is the answer. This is a long way. It's a long way. This is one method from what we have learned in the section 1.1 and the early part of section 1.2. Okay, two point, yeah, uh, section 2. Next, this is alternative way. Now, we, from here, same, same, from here, from, from here, characteristic equation and the solutions 2 and 3. Alternative is with this 2, t is equal to 2 and t is equal to 3, we let Sn is equal to 2 to the n, Tn is equal to 3 to the, 3 to the n. Then let capital UN is equal to B times Sn plus Tn, so Sn is equal to 2 to the nth square, n cube, n power, and Tn is 3 to the nth power. With this, we solve a equation. We have we had the initial conditions, uh, which if we had the initial conditions like this, a zero equal seven, a one is equal sixteen. So, so here with this, uh, when n is equal to one, we have a seven is equal to when n is equal zero, u zero is equal seven, and uh, b times 2 to the 0 is equal to 1 plus d times 1 here. So b plus d is equal to 7. When n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1, we have uh, 16 on the left hand side and 2b plus 3d as the right hand side. Then solve these two equations to have b is equal to 5 and d is equal to 2. Substitute these two here, 5 and 2 which gives us un is equal to this, which is same as this. So this, so this gives us a solution for the recurrence relation, which is the same as what we did find. So this is an easier way. So I expect you to use this way to solve the recurrence relation. Understand? This is also OK from what we have used. But this is much easier to have the same relation. The next CRM shows what we did uh, just now. When we have recurrence relations with co constant coefficients like this, uh, then find the character equation like this, uh, and with those solutions, then substitute this and make a solution like this. Then use the initial condition to figure out this constant B and D. Then that will give you the answer. Got it? Okay, then use those methods to find the solution for this population growth problem. Assume that the dear population of lost county is 200 at time 
at n is equal to 0 and 220 at n is equal to 1. That the increase from the time n minus 1 to time n is twice the, tw the increase time uh, incre uh, from time n minus 2 to time n minus 1. Write the reconciliation and solve the reconciliation. Here, d0 is equal to 200 and d1 is equal to 220 because yeah, at time n to 1. And then the increase from time n minus 1 to time n is d, this dn minus dn minus 1 is what? Twice. Twice of the difference between the earlier terms. This can be written in mathematically in this way. Then from here, we can have the recurrence relation like this. From these recurrence relations, we can find the characteristic equation like this. With t, t1 is equal to 1 and t1 is equal to 2. So, then from here, we uh, set up uh, b times 1 to the nth power plus c times 2 to the nth power. Okay? Then 1 to the nth power is 1, so it can be simplified in this way. Then initial condition gives us d0 is equal to 100, 200, d1 is equal to 220, which gives us d0 is equal to b plus c, d1 is equal to b plus 2 times c. From this equation, yes, the system of equation, we can find the b is equal to 180 and c is equal to 20, which gives us this. This is the solution for that recurrence relation. Understand? Easy. Yes, if you can just solve the quadratic uh, forms, then it's done. Now, Fibonacci sequence. You, you suppose you have a recurrence relationship like this, uh, with the initial condition, like that. Then from this recurrence relation, you can find the characteristic equation. From this characteristic equation, you can find the T by using the quadratic form. Isn't it? Okay, from here, you can set Bn is equal to B times d to the nth power plus d times one of the other solution to the nth power. You have f1 is equal to this with the initial condition 1 and f2 is equal to 1. So initial, with that initial condition, you have, we have two equations. From, by solving this, this linear system of equation, we have b is equal to this and d is equal to this. So solution for the Fibonacci sequence is obtained in this way. Now, Nabil, suppose we have a polynomial, the character, uh, recurrence relation like this with the initial values. Okay? The, all you have to do is find the characteristic polynomial. And then you can find the solution. Okay? By quadratic form, like this. Then from here you can form uh, uh, b, time, b times t to the n plus d times t2 to the n. Okay? Then just uh, use the initial value to form a linear system of equation. Solve it, then you have B and D. Then that is that gives you the so general solution for the recurrence relation. That's it. Got it? Wang Xiaoxiang. Got it? Okay. Easy. Yeah, this is a middle school mathematics. If you understand this algorithm, and it comes from this theorem. It, this comes from this theorem. Okay. Anyway, so, okay, this people are sequences. Okay, suppose we have uh, the, the second order linear homogeneous recurrence relation with co constant coefficient. And if both roots are equal to R, then what happens? What happens? If you have a 중근을 가지면, multiple root를 가지면, if 특성 방정식이 중근을 가지면 어떻게 되나? 정, 저기, 어, 함형빈군? 야, 중근을 가지면 어떻게 돼? 이게 중근을 가졌을 때는 그 앞에 방법으로 하지 말고 이 방법으로 하라는 소리예요. Suppose we have a multiple root from this characteristic polynomial, then instead of b, d, d, b times rn and d times rn, we use b times r to the n plus d times so n times r to the n. This is the way. Because uh, suppose we have a characteristic polynomial like this uh, that with this initial condition. If we, in this case, the, we have a multiple root 2, 
if we use this, this is just what? To do the n, to do the n here is just r times to do the n. This is not a solution. So it does not work when you have, we have a multiple root. So if we have a characteristic polynomial has root with multiplicity, then if we have a multiplicity like this, then we have uh, c1, 1 times alpha 1 to the n plus c1, 2 times n times alpha 1 to the n, da da da, if we have n to the alpha n to the power of this. Okay. Suppose we have a lot of multiple root, then we can use uh, this. This is the idea. Okay, so if we can use alpha 1, then in other words, if a correct has a root of alpha with multiplicity of n, then we can use this term. Linear combination of this instead of that. For instance, if a n is equal to r, a n s a n have a correct with, not, with root alpha and alpha, then we just choose this. If we have a multi, a multiple root with multiplicity 2, then a n set it a n as c1 times alpha to the n plus c2 times n times this is, this is the key. This is the key. Here just alpha n, but next n times alpha n. If we have a multi, the root with multiplicity 3, then we have n square times alpha to the n. So here is an example. For this recurrence relations, with this initial condition, if you do it, then you will see this. This is a multi. This is a root with multiplicity two. Then S n is two to the n. T n is n times to the n. Just then set it as this instead of just uh, and you have a times two to the n plus b times n times to the n. Then find the linear combination of linear system of equation with initial conditions to solve. To solve a, to find a1 and a, a1, a and b, which gives us the general solution for this recurrence relations with initial conditions. Same problem. For the multiplicity, you do, you do that. Same problem. And this is a, a general form for the higher polynomial, higher degree polynomials. And here, the, these are the homeworks that you're supposed to solve. Uh -huh. And applications are there in section 3, uh, which include the selection sort and binary search and the merge sort. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have studied in chapter 7, reconciliations and solving a reconciliation. And how to find the solution for the reconciliations. That's it. Any question on chapter 7? <laughs>